Finding a military relic can be exciting, but it can also be quite dangerous. An unexploded bomb, for example, would be an interesting thing for a historian to study, but might also still be live, and therefore capable of exploding if you touch it in the wrong place. We suppose that all adds to the thrill, and hopefully, you feel a little bit of that thrill when you watch this video of amazing, unexpected military finds. We've already mentioned unexploded bombs, so let's start with an incredible bomb story or two. In December 2019, just before Christmas in fact, a large unexploded Second World War bomb was found in the Italian city of Brindisi. The explosive was uncovered by accident during refurbishment works at a local cinema, and so it must have been hiding in the dark beneath the cinema for all these years. Experts called to the scene determined two things. The first is that it was probably a British-made bomb that was dropped on the city during an air raid in 1941. The second is that it might possibly still be live. Given that the bomb was three feet long and contained more than 80 pounds of explosives, that was a huge concern. The authorities eventually decided that the safest thing to do was to evacuate the entire surrounding area, which involved the temporary removal of over 50,000 people from their homes or their places of work. It was the biggest peacetime evacuation in Italian history, but it was so successful that almost everybody was either back at work or back at home just 12 hours later. The British might have been responsible for the presence of that bomb under an Italian cinema, but the British also have unexploded Second World War bomb problems of their own. In February 2020, several streets in the busy center of London had to be evacuated after the discovery of an old German bomb in Soho which had been disturbed by construction workers. Worryingly, the initial exclusion zone had to be expanded after the bomb disposal unit arrived at the scene and realized how powerful the unexploded device might be. The fact it didn't explode upon impact with the ground when it was dropped during a German air raid all those years ago is miraculous when you consider the fact that it weighed more than 500 pounds and had created a crater in the ground when it landed. The experts were able to successfully defuse the bomb after a few hours and allow everybody to return to work. They even managed to press ahead with all the theater shows that were planned for that evening. It sounds like everyone basically went for a cup of tea and then came back when the bomb squad had done their thing. How very British. If there are unexploded World War II bombs in Italy and Britain, there must also be unexploded World War II bombs in Germany. And of course, there are. As an example, here's an absolutely massive bomb that was found in Frankfurt in September 2017. The discovery of this monster right in the heart of Germany's financial capital was a terrifying incident that necessitated the temporary evacuation of 60,000 people as was the case in Italy, this was Germany's largest evacuation operation during peacetime. More than 1,000 emergency services workers were summoned to the building site the explosive device was found at. When they got there, they were staggered by a rusty old bomb weighing 1.8 tons. It's one of the 15% of British and American bombs that landed on the city during the war but failed to explode on impact and the whole hospital had to be evacuated before it could be made safe, an operation that took a whole day. The worrying thing is that there are more of these lurking somewhere beneath the streets, waiting to be found by unsuspecting construction workers. Biological weapons are extremely controversial, even in the context of a full-blown war, and if you're going to develop and test them, you have to do it a very long way away from populated areas. For the Soviet Union, that meant carrying out biological weapons research on Vosrostenyi Island in the Aral Sea. The weapons program ended over two decades ago, but the island is off limits to the public even today because of the dangers that still exist there. The tests conducted here 
were top secret, so we'll never know the full details of what went on. But the salty sand of the island is drenched in highly carcinogenic pesticides, and all the trees have dried up and died. Back when it was active, the weapons testing site was known as Aralsk-7 and didn't even appear on official Soviet maps. The presence of smallpox spores and anthrax has been detected here, along with typhus and brucellosis. Worryingly, the anthrax spores have proven to be capable of surviving in extreme conditions. Disinfectants can't kill them, and nor can heating them up to temperatures of 180 degrees Celsius or higher. The whole island can be counted as an abandoned military find of the worst kind. For decades, Stan Field of Parks Australia has had a priceless World War II relic in the attic of his shed without even realizing it. He knew the old artifact was something his father had bought as a curiosity from Parks Airport during the 1950s, but he had no idea of its function. He suspected it might be a shell casing, and in 2016, he finally got around to inviting an expert to come and look at it. That's when he found out it was the drop tank from a P-47 Thunderbolt plane, and it might be the very last one of its kind in the world. During the Second World War, Parks Airport hosted Parks Airfield, which, in turn, hosted more than 1,000 military personnel and their planes. Almost all of the planes and equipment were sold off at the end of the war or melted down for scrap, but local farmers were invited to come and take the first look. Stan's father was one of those interested parties and bought the tank because he thought it might be useful for watering his field. The reason so few drop tanks have survived is that they were dropped from 30,000 feet once they were empty, a fall that very few of them survived in one piece. Rather than cashing in on his find, Stan donated it to the Australian War Memorial. The Second World War is a sensitive topic in Germany, and so controls over who can keep what in terms of relics and equipment are tighter than they are in most places. As an example, you can't just keep a World War II Panther tank in your cellar, however much you might want to. That's why the 78-year-old owner of this tank was arrested when it was discovered in July 2015. The tank was seized and taken away, a process that involved calling in modern tanks to haul the old one out from its hiding place. The authorities, acting on an anonymous tip-off, also found an old torpedo and an anti-aircraft gun, neither of which the owner had a license for. Germany's War Weapons Control Act was created for situations like this, and the unnamed pensioner has violated just about every part of it. His lawyer argued that he shouldn't be prosecuted because the weapons were no longer functional, but that didn't impress the court. He wasn't imprisoned, but he was given an enormous fine. It's odd that it took the authorities this long to find him. Locals in the town of Heikendorf remember him driving his tank around in the snow 30 years ago. Because the German tank had been safely stored in a cellar, it was still in pretty good condition. The same can't be said of this American tank that was pulled out of the Dagasungan River in the Philippines in March 2020. It's an M5A1 Stuart light tank, and it's been stuck in the mud since the Second World War. This wasn't actually the first attempt to free the tank from the river. Its presence has been known by locals for several years, and a previous project to shift it had been tried without success in 2018. All they managed to drag out of the river back then was the tank's track link, which can hopefully now be reunited with the rest of the vehicle. While it might look messy in these pictures, mud is an excellent preservative. The tank's twin Cadillac V8 engine is still present and, theoretically at least, still functional. And the 37mm gun is still attached, although there's no ammunition present. With a lot of careful work and attention, it should be possible to fully restore this old relic and give it pride of place in a local museum. Stop us if you've heard this one before, but a long lost train full of Nazi gold might have been found in Poland. There have been rumors about the existence of such a train since the final days of the war. With its location, 
generally believed to be somewhere within the tunnels that the Nazis dug deep underground during their occupation of the country. So many unsuccessful searches have been made for the train over the years that many people are convinced it's just a myth. But perhaps this latest one will succeed where all the others have failed. Marika Tokarska, the district governor of the Polish district of Walbritsk, has seen the research and the maps, and she's convinced it's the real deal. What she's wary of is the idea that the train and the tunnels around it might be extensively booby-trapped, and the proposed location within the Owl Mountains for the related dig is full of methane. Nevertheless, she's ordered local firefighters and emergency service workers to coordinate with archaeologists in an attempt to reach the tunnels. Perhaps this will finally prove the truth of the legend. Or maybe it's yet another fool's errand. We've already seen a Russian island full of military relics. Now here's a German one. This is the abandoned island of Bolshoi Tutors, which is covered in scattered World War II relics in every direction you look. You'll want to watch your step if you decide to take a closer look at them, though. The minefields here have never been cleared and are all still dangerous. Despite the fact that everything you'll find here is German, the island is actually part of Russia's Leningrad Oblast. It used to have a Finnish population from the early 16th century all the way through until 1939, but the only permanent resident today is one lonely lighthouse keeper. The Germans took the island in 1941 and turned it into a heavily armored stronghold, depositing vast amounts of ammunition, guns, and artillery on the land. The Soviet army finally took it back in 1944, forcing the Germans to evacuate in a single day. They didn't get the chance to take their equipment with them, so it's all still there getting rusty. From a Russian island full of German military equipment, we are now going to a long-lost Australian village full of American tanks. It seems the village had been entirely forgotten about, even by the people who lived close to it, until a drought struck the Blue Mountains region of New South Wales and lowered the levels of the Warragamba Dam. As the water receded, the rusting remains of the old war machines were slowly revealed in Lake Buragarang. The most prominent and easily identifiable of them is an M3 Grant. Nobody seems to be entirely sure how the tanks got here, but local historian Kate Lennertz says that excess military machinery was sold off at the end of the war and often bought by farmers, a process we saw in action a little earlier in this video. The farmers would use the old tanks for land clearing and other heavy-duty tasks. The whole area was eventually drowned to make way for the new dam, and it seems the entire history of the place was forgotten the moment it happened. It should be possible to remove the tanks and put them on display somewhere, but many locals feel that they should be left in place as reminders of what existed on the land before it was flooded. If there's such a thing as a military equivalent of Aladdin's cave, perhaps it's the incredible place known as the Omaka Aviation Heritage Center in New Zealand. In July 2020, the center proudly announced that it had received the entire collection of aviation enthusiast John Smith, who donated his warplanes to them in his will. The stars of the collection are a Mosquito and a P-51, but they're just the tip of the iceberg. John started collecting planes in the 1950s when he worked in a scrapyard. It broke his heart seeing the proud old warbirds brought in to be taken apart, so he bought them and kept them instead. He carried on doing so long after he left the scrapyard, continuing to acquire unwanted planes from all over the world for almost 60 years. There are almost too many planes to count, but we can see a tiger moth and a P-40 in some of these images, still with their original paintwork. Elsewhere is a Lockheed Hudson. The P-51 is in such good condition that the Omaka Aviation Heritage Center even hopes it might be possible to get it flying again, but that's a process that's going to take time. For now, they're just happy to have it. 
We've looked at several unexploded World War II bombs in this video, all of which were safely defused by bomb disposal experts. Because of that, you might be wondering whether any old World War II bombs ever explode at all. The answer to that question is a resounding yes. One went off in the middle of the night in Germany in June 2019 and left an enormous crater in the ground. Fortunately, it was in the middle of a field. If it wasn't, the incident would have been tragic. The size of the explosion and the damage it did to the land can be plainly seen in photographs taken from above the blast site. Nobody knows why it suddenly went off. It had been undisturbed since being dropped close to the town of Limburg more than 70 years ago, and there hadn't been any recent farming activity in the field that may have disturbed it. The fact that no obvious trigger for the incident could be found is a major concern for the German military and emergency services, who now have obvious worries about the prospects of another bomb going off without warning, this time somewhere where there are a lot of people. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!